All right, let's get back to the uh, U.S. Supreme Court blocking President Biden's plan to cancel $430 billion in student loan debt. 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy joins us. Uh, great to have you here, Vivek. Uh, let's start there, get your reaction to the court essentially saying that Joe Biden doesn't have the power to hand out that kind of money. I think it's a great decision by the court. It actually builds on West Virginia versus EPA, which they ruled on a year ago. Hmm. That held that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, exceeded its constitutionally authorized scope from Congress. This comes down on the same side of that question with respect to the U.S. Department of Education. So I think this is even more important than just being about student loan forgiveness. And as a policy matter, I think it is a disaster to be able to forgive loans for some in what's actually a regressive move by Biden. But the more important legal point, and this is what will be important to me as U.S. president when I lead the executive branch, is that if you agree with the Supreme Court here, it means that most regulations committed by the federal administrative state are probably also unconstitutional, which I think is great news. And I will govern the executive department of the U.S. government accordingly, not enforcing a lot of these unconstitutional administrative state made up regulations. I mean, Vivek, wasn't this whole program really just a vote getting exercise from the president? Try and get the younger vote. Hey, I'm going to wipe out your student debt. It's all about votes. It's about pandering. Absolutely. Buying up as many votes as you can. It's like showering cocaine on a bunch of cocaine addicts. That doesn't mean that that's what's right for them, but it does work in the short run. Mm. What I think we need to do is start thinking over the long run. Our federal government now, Ashley, has a bad habit of paying people in this country to do the opposite of what we should that want them to do. Right. Pay them more to stay at home instead of go to work. More to single mothers not to have a man in the house than to be married. And now actually subsidizing loans for the people who aren't paying them back rather than for the people who do. I'll end that as our next president. Very good. I want to go on to the other big issue that the high court also struck down. Affirmative action in college admissions. Your thoughts on that? So I have been a chief opponent of affirmative action for a very long time. I think the court came down on the correct side of this, but I think that's not a destination. That's just the first step. We now need to eviscerate race-based preferences in every sphere of American life, including in the economy. As U.S. president, I'm going to use that as a next step to say I'll repeal Lyndon Johnson's executive order, which requires government contractors employing about 20 percent of the U.S. workforce to adopt these race-based quotas as well. We need to restore a country where, again, you're judged not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and your contributions. Meritocracy is part of what it means to be an American. And I'm proud to say the Supreme Court took a first step. It is just that, a first step to restoring merit in America. Uh, next one for you, Vivek. A new Fox poll shows 48 percent of Americans believe that the country's best days are behind us. Well, that's depressing. It's down nine points from just two years ago. You know, what would you do to turn this around? Where's the disconnect? I think the disconnect is that young people don't even know the facts about our country's history. I believe that every high school student who graduates from high school should have to pass the same civics test that immigrants to this country. My mother had to pass when she became a naturalized citizen mm. that other naturalized citizens have to pass to know something about a country. Young people don't value a country that they just inherit. They value a country that they have a stake in building. The other thing, Ashley, is the declining economic growth in this country is not helping that statistic. We're slated to grow at less than 1% GDP growth this year. For most of our national history, we've grown at over 4 plus percent GDP growth. I have a good plan to restore that. It's not complicated. Unlock American energy. Put people back to work. Mm. Reform the Fed. Shut down the administrative state. Once we restore economic growth again in this country, I think many Americans of every age will once again be proud of this nation as well. It's part of what we need. I, I, very good. I, I got to ask you about the polls, uh, how much faith you put in them, but they certainly show that Donald Trump way out ahead at 56 percent, uh, Ron DeSantis at 22. You're in at number three in this latest poll at, at 5 percent. What does this tell you? I mean, it's very early days yet, but it does seem that Donald Trump is, no matter what his legal uh, challenges are, continues to be streets ahead. Why is that? Well, here's what I'll say. I'm ahead of where Trump was in June of 2015. Mm. I think that's the apples to apples comparison. Yeah. And the fact is, Ashley, I'll be honest about it. Most of this country still doesn't know who I am. 
So the fact that I'm placing as high as third place yeah. in some of these polls, including that recent one, is, I think, a great sign for what's ahead for this campaign. The debates start in August. I think anything before the debates at a, at a granular level is irrelevant. I'm glad I'm yeah. going to be close to the center of that debate stage, hopefully. And then we're going to actually move up from there. We have an early voting system in Iowa and in New Hampshire for a reason. I think that first in the nation status is important because it allows voters to really get to know candidates personally. That's why I think that we have a good system that's going to select the right nominee. And I'm aiming to be that person. Will you take the pledge that the RNC is asking for to support whoever the GOP picks as their, you know, for their primary candidate? If every other major candidate in this race also does the same thing, Mm. then as a table stakes for getting into that debate, I'll absolutely do it. But I think that more importantly, we as a party need to debate, forget the who. We need to debate what we stand for and why we stand for Mm -hmm. it. That's the more important part of the debate stage. We argue about the who too much. I argue about the what and the why. Let's define that agenda. And I hope we select the party, the nominee for our party, who's actually leading the way in defining that agenda. I think that's what we're already doing, Ashley. Very good. We'll have to leave it there. But uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, sir, thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you.